Hello everybody, it's me, it's Hojo Hoji. Welcome back to some more Jugai Lost content. In today's video, we're going to be discussing this month of Jugai Lost for the month of March. Now, I didn't make this uh, video for last month, I don't believe. I'm pretty sure I didn't because I didn't really think there was too many news. But this month, there's a couple important things that I do want to talk about, get my thoughts out there. Again, as I go over these pieces of news, uh, let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments down below. I'm interested to see what everyone thinks of everything. Also, I haven't made a video the past couple days. i uh, just kind of been a little busy. Uh, also, I didn't even get to clear uh, Kai Yan, even though it's super easy. Uh, till day two because I was just way too busy day one way too many things going on So I do apologize, but I'm here I'm back and this next week I have a lot of uh, video plans actually a lot of ideas for things I want to do and hopefully I can make those things uh, come come to life Is that is that the word? Hopefully I can get those videos out. That's kind of the main thing also streams everything of course will be continuing I think I'm gonna stream like three days this next week So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's actually just discuss this month in Dragon Loss for the month of March I hope you're enjoying the events that are currently live. I'm here to talk about a little bit of a little about a dash of disaster as well as other things that are coming up in Dragalia Loss. Of course, Yuji Okada, the director of Draw Loss. I was, gonna say, I was gonna say the new director, but he's not really new. He's kind of uh, a little bit older director now. He's been he's been around for a little bit. Of course, not the first director though. You know, R.I.P. Uh, Matsuura, I believe that was his name. Matsuura, R.I.P. He's not he's not dead, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like. <laughs> He's not dead. Let me clear that up. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive right now. It's okay. A dash of disaster. In this event, you can get a facility that boosts the, the stats of Blade and Wand Adventures. Also, Valerio, an adventure who appears in the Summon Showcase, blah, blah, blah. Basically, switch between stances. Stances are different things. Of course, that's Valerio's kind of uh, gimmick. That's what he does. I hope you enjoy playing with the subtle differences and how he controls depending on his stance. Now, I don't have Valerio. I can't really say how he plays, if it's well, if it's not well. Um, I don't really know how his DPS stacks up either. Um, so we're just gonna have to wait a little bit and see how well he's he's truly going to be once all is uh, you know everything's everything is already out. But like I haven't got to try him myself. I don't think he's up on the DPS him either. So things things kind of couple and make it like I don't know how good he is. Maybe he's really good. Maybe he's not really good. But we do have Pipple and Pipple. You know everybody loves Pipple. Pipple is out and Pipple is very good. You know Lily is just completely dead. You know R.I.P. Whoever made a staff tier two or not a staff a one tier two right? <laughs> Who would do that? Definitely not me. Could it be me? Anyways, I also want to point out that Valeria's second skill, Bon Appetit, applies a new effect called Inspiration to Adventures. If an adventure inspiration increases to stage 5, the next skill effect is guaranteed to be critical. Now, it's pretty much just like a worse Energize. I think Energize is probably better, but it is something, you know, it's kind of like an additional effect on his uh, on his thing, so it's kind of like, okay, there it is. The Dragon Nemes also has a special skill which extends Shapeshift time, allowing you to deal tons of damage when you Shapeshift. Now, of course, you really don't want to be in Shapeshift form too long. However, if this does allow, you know, Nimi's, uh after you use a skill, you can Dragon Tank at the very beginning of a match, and then you can, like, use his skill, and then you can, like, Dragon Tank a second time, or maybe, like, later on in the fight, you can do that. Like, you Dragon Tank once, uh, use your skill as soon as the attack hits, or, like, right before the attack hits, and then you're going to have more Shapeshift time, like, another uh, couple seconds. And then if another attack hits there, you can take it with your dragon again. So it does allow for like double dragon tanking, which is very interesting. And you don't really need it right now, but it's just something that's, you know, it's really cool. And it could be useful in the future for endgame content. Who really knows? You know, the next Agito, I, I think, is either going to be Flame or water. I think it's going to be one of those two. And you might be saying, water? Why are we going to get water? Like, why Why for wind adventures? Well, you'll see in a minute, there's a couple things that kind of lean towards that. So, yeah, Nimi's is very cool. I really like his new thing. Also, I want to say Pipple is very fun to play with. Uh, he's extremely different from any other character in the game besides, I would say, he, he fits most closely in line with Durant. That's, that's who he fits most closely in line with. So, if you have Durant and you like playing with Durant, you're probably going to enjoy playing with Pipple, to be honest. So, uh, of course, they're not like super similar. That's probably who he plays the most like so uh, Pipple is again a very unique adventure as well lots of unique characters on this uh, part one banner for a dash of disaster again very interesting to see what part two will hold and speaking of part two you know that was that was a great segue trip part two of the summon showcase will start in the near future and it'll feature Mitsuba an adventure who appeared in the event like Valerio Mitsuba can switch between the two different stances which change her normal attacks and skills these skills or these are called sashimi stance and tempura stance which is very funny you know reminds me of sushi right it makes me hungry for some sushi. But yeah, sashimi stance and tempura stance. Again, really interesting what they do. Uh, it just says they're going to change stuff and they're in different attacks and skills, etc. So, interesting exactly what they're going to do. You know, they're probably going to release a part two summon showcase notification in the future. And that's going to be one of the videos I upload this week. Uh, and that's going to, you know, obviously entail what, what her stances do, what her kit is about, everything, how everything revolves. So, yeah, that's that's going to be Matuba. Again, very good to see how good she's going to be. Um, I don't really know what weapon type she's going to be, judging from this. She could be a blade. She's holding this, like, um, 
like katana type it's like a like a sword or something maybe she's a sword maybe she's a blade uh, i think she would be a wand just because of the facilities are blade and wand so i would assume she's a wand but again what she's holding is obviously not a wand so we'll just have to wait and see um what she's gonna be again i don't really know for sure uh, i don't think it's been datamine either if it has please correct me in the comments down below i don't think it's been datamine though i haven't really heard about it but again uh, if you know for sure, let me know in the comments, or if you have any, you know, uh, if you, you think what she's going to be this or that, or you know, whatever, you know, let me know. Also, I do want to mention, I don't think it's confirmed that she's water either. I don't think anywhere over here confirms that she's water. We did have a part two summon showcase with, like, uh, I don't know if that was a part two, actually. The one with Akasha, she was wind, which was, like, completely out of the blue because, you know, the other units were shadow in the event, so... It could be something like that. Uh, I believe that was a part two. Uh, maybe not. The Monster Hunter Band also had a part two. You know, there's a lot of things, so I don't know. I assume she's going to be water, judging from this, though, just from the tsunamis and, like, her outfit's all kind of blue-esque. So, blue-esque, I guess that's the word I was looking for. So, I assume she's going to be water, just depending, you know, what weapon type she's going to be. Either a wand, um, maybe a sword, maybe a blade, maybe a dagger, something like that. I don't, I don't think it's a dagger. It doesn't really look like a dagger, but... Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. That's Mitsubo. She looks very cute, though. She looks like that girl from uh, Magical High School or whatever. Your regular Magical High School. Kind of. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Anyways, we're also planning on adjusting the autoplay feature for adventures and dragons that have unique control options. So look forward to that in the future. That is very, very cool. There's a lot of adventures that have like unique styles of play that you really need to adapt the way you play with to actually play them optimally. So I'm glad they're fixing it. It's going to be a very tough challenge to get every single adventure to play optimally. Uh, but I'm interested to see how exactly they're going to do it. Like, uh, if they actually do optimally, uh, like, the true optimal way, but I, which I don't think they will, but maybe they're just going to make them play a little bit better. You know, there was Hunter Series, Hunter Berserker, which they did fix before. You know, previously, they already fixed it. There's other units like Nobunaga, which need to force strike to dispel rather than just wait for their skill 2 to come out. Also, speaking of Nobunaga, she's amazing. I might make a video on her. We'll have to see. Nobunaga Waifu Thighs. Anyways, so uh, there's a lot of adventures like that who really need to have, like, a adjustment in the way you play them compared to the, you know, other units of their weapon type. So, interesting to see how exactly they're going to work again. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. It says in the future, so we don't really know when. If it's the near future or the far future, we'll just have to wait and see. Next up, Adventures with the Mana Spiral Unlocked. We would like the Mana Spiral for three more adventures. As our Mana Spirals are unbound, the four strikes of Shadow Tune Adventures, Cleo, Staff, and Nefaria Bow, get an effect that removes one buff from enemies. This effect will be useful against bosses like those from the Agito Uprising. That's probably the main place it's useful. You could also see useful in Master. You know, uh, the Master Dragons get their defense up buff. Uh, and also, I'm going to speak on Master of Dragon Trials in a minute. But anyways, meanwhile, the Water Tune Zanefried gains the ability to inflict Frostbite with his skills and does more damage against Frostbite enemies, which greatly increases the damage he can deal. Now, I do want to mention again, I don't like how they're just tacking on, um, like, they're like, oh, you can poison Afaria, and even though your kit is based around blind, you can poison now, and now Zanefried gets Frostbite, and, uh, you know, blah, 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 poison, all this stuff. Like, I don't really like how they're doing that. I would rather have them, like improve their kit even more like exactly how their kit is rather than just add the affliction of their respective elements to make them good like i don't think that's how you should make the adventures good obviously that does make them good but like i said i do i do think i'm going to make a video on this so you know that exact topic very soon so uh yeah anyways uh, all these adventures have been in the game since launch, so you should try using them and see how much more powerful they've become. This was announced recently, but I want to reiterate that it's taking some time to make adjustments for the Shadow Tune 3 star adventures, whose mana spiral will be unlocked, so you'll have to wait a little longer for them. Thank you for your patience. So, they said it was going to be coming at the end of February, and then now they changed it to the end of March. So we're going to have to wait a whole extra month for these three-star shadow units. And once they're out, I'm assuming they're going to be almost as good as the five-stars. I don't think they're going to be better. They really might be, but I don't think they will. I think if they make them better, that would be absolutely insane and i have no idea why they would do that but uh like i said if they make it better that's going to make shadow literally like the shadow is already the best line of the game if three if these three stars are as good uh, even close to as good as like lathna or ayasu or someone like that it's going to be absolutely ridiculous how strong shadow truly can be if they do that again i don't expect them to make them that strong i just i just expect them to make them a little bit good maybe like one or two of the three star shadow units will be like uh, like uh, Ayasu tier or something, but I don't expect anyone to be like above Nefaria. Like Nefaria with their 70 mana circle is 
absolutely ridiculous. I don't expect anyone to be better than uh, better than her. But there's a lot of good shadow units that have, you know, shadow three stars that have a lot of potential. You know, uh, Zace was actually pretty solid when the game first released, and he has a lot of potential with the three star. Um, you know, the three stars, or the seven, mana sp mana spiral, oh my god, I can't even speak, the mana spiral, he has a lot of potential with the mana spiral, there's a couple other good, other good units like Taro, oh, I don't know if he's actually good, if that was just because of the weapon, but Taro, he has a lot of potential as well, there's a couple units that I'm, I'm personally looking forward to see how good they become, you know, for three stars like uh, Vita, I really like Vita's design, I hope she becomes really, really good, and then there's a couple actually four stars, which were not mentioned, that I think deserve a mana spiral, you know, original Berserker, uh, climbing, etc. There's a couple other ones, but those are just two off the top of my head that kind of deserve uh, four, you know, as four stars, a mana spiral. We'll have to wait and see if they do give them to four stars. They only say three stars, so we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, that's all I have to say about those uh, those mana spirals. Next up, the Agito Uprising. The light attuned boss Kai Yan recently joined the Agito Uprising. The mana spiral was recently unlocked for some more shadow tune adventures, so he equipped them with the Chimera weapons or high dragon weapons and use them to challenge him. He says right there Chimera weapons, so you can you can literally beat this fight with four people who have the Chimera tech weapons. So straight up, he, that's how that just goes to show how easy this fight is. This fight, this fight is insanely easy, and there's a 10 minute timer, which you don't even need. You can literally, if you have two to our dragon child weapons, you can clear this fight within a matter of two minutes. And it's it's pretty crazy. Like Volk. Even with tier 2 weapons, max and binded, every single unit had them. It would take you at least like 4 minutes to get the clear. But this literally takes 2 minutes. That's how good Shadow is. I do want to make a video discussing Kayan. I'm talking about all these video ideas I have. I do plan on getting them all out. I promise. I'm not just spouting nonsense. But uh, a little preview. Basically, this fight is way too easy. Super disappointed. But there is a couple reasons why it is easy. And of course, I'll discuss those in the video. But I, overall, I think... Making one Agito quest super easy is okay. I just expected it to be in the fire water, uh, fire water wind cycle, not in shadow light. But it does make sense. They might make like one, like one shadow light boss fight easy, uh, which is of course Cayenne, and then one in the in the wind fire water cycle easy, so that you can just get your six star weapon mub for those and break into the high dragon trial cycle for master using those weapons. That's what I assume. But of course, the Agito weapons are actually better then the high dragon trial weapons even tier 2 high dragon trial weapons are beat by agito weapons in most scenarios so i just like i don't know why they made the fight so easy like i, I kind of understand why but i just doesn't really make my too much sense and I, I have my full thoughts you know laid out i don't have them all laid out yet but i'm gonna have them all laid out for the video like i said right now i'm just kind of like brainstorming ideas uh, of what i'm gonna say so yeah that that's what kind of my early thoughts on kai yan and of course right here they say something just like last time, you're able to craft six star weapons using the materials from the first clear rewards for standard difficulty in the Agito Uprising. Bosses that transform during the battle starting at expert difficulty are a big part of the Agito Uprising. So here's some post transformation art. This is really cool art. Uh, I really like how they actually release the art for these post transformations. I didn't actually know what they look like in detail, so I'm happy they show them off like exactly what they look like. Like uh, Volk looks actually really cool. Like he looks so awesome. And like these wings and this like Super Saiyan 3 hair and he's like a wolf and he's like a crazy werewolf with wings and Super Saiyan 3 hair. It's just it's really awesome. Uh yeah, that that's Volk and then of course Kanyan is like a huge bull uh with these I'm pretty sure he mixed with like Killing armor or Killing uh or artifact or something like that. Relics, I think that's the name that they use over here. So he's huge and he he's awesome. He, he's the designs are really cool for these uh for these characters. I just the fight itself is unfortunate really. Enemy behavior and other factors in the Agito Uprising are designed to make these quests a little more approachable than advanced Hydra or advanced Dragon Trials in terms of difficulty. To make these battles even more accessible, we'll also continue releasing Chimera enemies and Chimera weapons for the applicable element when we implement these battles going forward. So they really just say right there, we want these battles to be easier than High Dragon Trials, and I'm assuming they're talking about Master High Dragon Trials. Like, these fights are easier than Master High Dragon Trials. However, I think Master Agito will be easier uh, or it will be harder than Master High Dragon Trials, but I think Expert Agito right now is easier, uh, if that makes sense. But again, of course, once Master uh, Agito comes out and Tier 2 Agito weapons come out, those are by far going to be the best weapons in the game and the hardest fights in the game, I'm assuming, because right now the fights are on the cusp of being, of being like super, super incredibly difficult. They're right on the cusp. They're not quite there, but they're right on the cusp of being super hard. So uh, I do think Master Agito will be ridiculously insane. Again, shout out to Fort for that, uh, for that idea. Anyways. 
You can create weapons that are effective against Chimera enemies by defeating phantom enemies. All the way challenging, we're, de we're designing Chimera battles so they, being, so they can be cleared in solo play, which is, you know, obviously possible. You can prepare for advanced dragon trials by following the phantom Chimera Agito advanced dragon trial pattern. So if you're having trouble clearing advanced dragon trials, try starting with the Agito. And I think this is a little bit misleading. Uh, I, I think advanced dragon trials are easier up until Master. Up to Expert High Dragon Trials are easier than Agito, but then Master High Dragon Trial is kind of like in, in a separate thing. Like I think it goes, I think it goes right here. It goes Agito, or it goes Chimera, and then it goes uh, Standard and Expert High Dragon Trials, and then it goes Agito, and then it goes Master High Dragon Trials. That's what I think the pattern is in this. So this is a little misleading in my opinion, but it is you know it's a good rule of thumb. Uh, you know in general it's a good rule of thumb. Uh, next up, let's talk about the events for this month. The events this month will be reviving the Skyborne Spectral Raid event in mid-March. Again, this event got another rerun. They already rerun this event two times. This is the next rerun, and it's like, why? Like, I, I don't know why. Like, I'm pretty sure the dragon... Was the dragon we got Peng Lai? I think it was Peng Lai, right? Uh, I, I don't know why we're getting this two times when there's so many events that haven't gotten a rerun again, like, again yet, like um, the Halloween events. Um, the, or not the Halloween event, sorry, not the, oh my god. Uh, the one right before Halloween event, Loyalty Requiem, Loyalty Requiem didn't get it, and the, um, Circus event, that was the one I was thinking that, the Circus event didn't get a rerun yet. Same with Loyalty Requiem, so I don't know why those events still haven't gotten a rerun when these events, you know, this is the second rerun we're getting of this event. Uh, they might be saving it for the sort of, uh, like, play events in the past, or play events that happened in the past kind of feature that should be coming soon. We'll probably get news about that in the digest, which is going to happen in a minute. But anyways, we're also planning to unlock the adventure Su Fang's Mana Spiral. So if you haven't played with this event, don't miss your chance to add them to your team. Uh, Su Fang Mana Spiral is pretty cool, but like RIP Wedding Aoi mains, like big fat RIP. <laughs> big fat RIP. We'll be adding the Mana Spiral for two other adventures at that time as well. And one of those adventures will be Hawk. Be on the lookout for more information via notifications. And that's why Hawk has a picture right here. Hawk Mana Spiral is going to be nuts. He's probably going to be better than Nefaria. Maybe, or maybe, okay, maybe not better than Nefaria, but probably up to par with Nefaria. Um, and I'm really excited to see how good he's actually going to be. I'm assuming they're just going to attack on Poison and Poison Punisher onto his kit because that's literally what they did with Nefaria uh, since, you know, both their elements actually revolve around Poison. So that's what I'm assuming. Kind of unfortunate, but that's honestly probably what they're going to do. You know, if you invest in Joaquim, RIP, because Hawk is probably going to be better. But again, Joaquim does have Bog and Hakim or in Hawk. Hakim! Hakim, Hawk has stun, so that is something they have different. Uh, I believe Hawk has stun. I'm pretty sure he does, right? I'm pretty sure it's stun. So that is something they have different. And um, yeah, overall, I do think Hawk definitely deserved that mana spiral. And same with uh, Su Feng. They, they definitely need it. They definitely need it. We add an interlude to Chapter 11 in January, and in March we'll add one to Chapter 12. Again, excited to see what it's going to be. They said it's going to be crucial for the future of the story. So again, excited to see what it's going to be. The future of Dragalia Lost. As of this month, it will have been one and a half years since the release of Dragalia Lost. We're planning some events for the end of March to celebrate the anniversary. We're also planning to release a Dragalia Digest where we talk about a version update at the end of March and the future of Dragalia Lost. Keep an eye out for notifications with more detailed schedule information. This is a huge piece of news. Usually at Digest, they reveal this next collab. Like I believe, I believe they revealed the Monster Hunter collab, uh, the Mega Man collab, and the Firebomb collab, all three collabs in this game so far on the Dragalia Digest. So I'm assuming we'll get another collab information at the very end of the, di the Digest or maybe at the beginning. I don't know. We'll see. But I do expect to see some sort of collab information. Uh, it's not, I don't, okay, I don't want to say I expect to see, but I wouldn't be surprised to see. That's That should be a better rule of thumb. I, I don't expect to see a collab, but I wouldn't be surprised to see. Again, if the collab is revealed, definitely going to want to save up your Wormite, especially if you want those adventures uh, so you don't have to waste 90,000 Wormite like I did. Anyways, uh, again, lots of news to come for this digest. Probably the most important ones would be Mana Spirals for a, bu a bunch of adventures, the next endgame boss content. Um, I say the next endgame boss content. I mean the next Agito battle. Uh, they might be making some gameplay changes. Uh, they might release that in the digest. They might also um, discuss the, the the thing that I was just talking about a minute, the, or a minute ago. What is it? That you can replay past events uh, even though they're not like currently live in quotes. They're probably going to discuss that because I believe they did say they wanted that out for the one and a half year anniversary. Uh, so we should expect those. And that's because those are kind of the main things I expect to see. They might talk about April Fool's. They might do something for April Fool's simply because like not slumber shot. They might do something like that. We'll just have to wait and see. Those are kind of the things that I am uh, anticipating to see in the digest. Again, lots of hype. Hopefully going to be streaming my live reactions to the digest. Just have to see when it's going to occur and if I'm actually available during that time. If not, uh, then I'll at least make a video discussing everything in the digest. So yeah, digest coming up uh, coming up in March. Should be near the end of March. So probably around the 20th. I would, I would anticipate it around the 20th. 
Uh, since adding the revive and mentor bonus feature in January's update, we received feedback that it has become easier to clear high difficulty quests. And I was happy to see that our data also shows more players challenging and clearing these quests, uh, which is, you know, of course, that's what has been happening. That said, we've also seen cases where players who haven't cleared the quest before and the players who want to get the mentor bonus are having trouble matching because it is hard to convey what you wish to accomplish through the room's objectives. This leads, players, this leads to players with different objectives being matched up, so we'd like to fix this in a future update by adding conditions for room creation. Now, there's already conditions, but the conditions are really not good at all, so they might do like a mentor feature or something like that, and I can uh, that's they might show that off in the digest. So looking forward to seeing that. Next up, starting with chapter 12 of the main campaign, we introduced a change to gameplay where players must complete endeavors to progress. They say they want to keep doing this, and I don't really think it's a good idea personally. I think doing that was stupid. You're limiting players who probably can already clear it to have to build some sort of weapon, like if they're newer players, obviously older players have probably already completed all the endeavors, but newer players can probably complete the quest as well, you know, on, on normal, but you're limiting them to have to make this really expensive weapon, you know, at the beginning of the game, it's a very expensive, like 2 million cost, 5 star elemental weapon to, to even challenge the quest, which I think is pretty stupid, um, but they say they want to keep on doing it, so, you know, they do they, like, you know, do whatever you want to do, Yuji Okada, but I personally don't think that's a good idea. Again, Khmer weapons, you can just build a Khmer weapon and take it on, but nope, you need to build a core elemental to even tackle it, so I think it's pretty dumb, but that is what it is. In conclusion, this month, we're giving the following items to players. We get five summon vouchers, which is pretty cool, uh, exquisite honey, skip tickets, and two golden keys is actually pretty nice, but we don't really need golden keys, to be honest, but we do get two golden keys, which is cool. Again, I'm buying, I'm buying the worm print two times, so that's nice. Uh, five summon vouchers is okay. I really wanted some more champion assessments though like i really really need champion assessments i am so low with all the 70 mana circle adventures i have been doing recently but uh yeah that's everything i have to say about this month of july loss i feel like this is a pretty long video so i apologize it says the next installment of this month of july loss will be posted around april 2nd not april fools april 1st because they don't want it to be an april fools like joke or anything they might release some sort of joke uh, i don't know we'll have to see but probably not summer shot uh and yeah that's everything from Yuji Okada for this month's Regal I Lost. Lots of interesting things here. You know, the Dragalia Digest, definitely the biggest piece of news. Mana Spirals, talking about the Augito Uprising quest and how they want them to be easier than High Dragon Trials. Mitsuba coming up as an adventure confirmed. I'm interested to see who the four star in this banner is going to be, though. Maybe it's going to be that one dude who's in the cooking competition with them. I don't really remember his name right now, but it might be that dude. We'll have to see. Again, Pipple was pretty random, but Pipple is there. Also, is there going to be a dragon in this part two showcase? I don't know. We'll see. Nimi's is awesome. A uh, really interesting thing. And yeah, that's everything. And thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on everything that I discussed in the comments down below. What do you think? Are you hype? Are you not hype? Are you hype for the digest? What's your digest predictions? Thank you guys so much. And until next time, have a nice trip.